Today, I want to discuss a topic crucial for achieving your dreams and goals. Self-discipline. In today's message, I'll share with you the fifth way to stay focused on your dreams, which is by practicing self-discipline. I understand that self-discipline might sound boring and difficult, but trust me, you're not alone in struggling with it. It's a common challenge that many of us face. However, by listening to this message, you can turn things around and learn how to cultivate self-discipline in your life. We all have dreams and goals that we want to achieve, but often we get sidetracked by distractions or our own lack of discipline. But I'm here to tell you that with the right mindset and practices, you can stay focused and disciplined toward your dream. So, if you're ready to take your dreams seriously and learn how to stay focused through self-discipline, then keep watching. Because by the end of this video, you will have the tools and knowledge to turn your dreams into reality. Let's get started. Starting with number five, the fifth way to stay focused on your dreams is practicing self-discipline. Now, I know self-discipline may not be the most exciting or glamorous topic, but let me tell you, it is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. It is the foundation upon which all other personal development skills are built. Without self-discipline, all our efforts toward success will crumble. So, what exactly is self-discipline? It is the ability to control your thoughts and actions, to stay focused on your goals, and to resist temptations and distractions. It is the power to do what needs to be done, even when you don't feel like it. Self-discipline is the bridge between your dreams and your reality. Now, I know many of you may be thinking, but Jim, self-discipline is hard. It requires sacrifice and willpower. I'm not sure I have what it takes. Well, let me tell you, my friend, self-discipline is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. And just like going to the gym, it may be tough at first, but the more you exercise your self-discipline, the easier it becomes. So, how can we practice self-discipline and stay focused on our dreams? Let me share with you some practical tips that have helped me and countless others in our journey toward success. First and foremost, you must have a clear vision of your dreams. You cannot stay disciplined if you don't know what you're working towards. Take some time to sit down and define your goals, both short-term and long-term. Write them down, visualize them, and make them as specific as possible. This will give you a sense of direction and purpose, making it easier to stay disciplined. Next, you must create a plan of action. A dream without a plan is just a wish. Break down your goals into smaller achievable tasks and set deadlines for yourself. This will not only help you stay on track, but also give you a sense of accomplishment as you cross each task off your list. Remember, a goal without a plan is just a dream. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, distractions. In today's fast-paced world, distractions are everywhere, and they can easily derail us from our path toward success. But here's the thing, we cannot control the distractions, but we can control our response to them. We must learn to say no to things that do not align with our goals. We must learn to prioritize and focus on what truly matters. It's not about having more time. It's about making the most of the time we have. Another crucial aspect of self-discipline is developing good habits. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Our habits shape our character and determine our success. So it's important to identify the habits that are holding us back and replace them with positive ones. It may not be easy, but with discipline and consistency, we can form new habits that will lead us towards our dreams. One of the biggest challenges we face when it comes to self-discipline is our own mind. Our thoughts can either lift us up or bring us down. That's why it's crucial to have a positive mindset. We must learn to control our thoughts and replace negative self-talk with empowering affirmations. Remember, our thoughts become our actions, and our actions become our reality. Lastly, I want to talk about accountability. We all need someone to hold us accountable for our actions, especially when it comes to self-discipline. Find an accountability partner, someone who will support and encourage you, but also hold you accountable for your actions. This could be a friend, a mentor, or a coach. Having someone to answer to can be a powerful motivator to stay disciplined and focused on our I, dreams. And I'm here to tell you that the number three way to do that is by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now I know what you may be thinking, Jim. That seems obvious. Of course we should surround ourselves with positive and supportive people. But let me tell you, my friends, it is not as easy as it sounds. In fact, 
It is one of the biggest challenges we face in our journey towards success. We are constantly bombarded with negativity, whether it be from the media, our peers, or even our own inner thoughts. And it takes a conscious effort to surround ourselves with positivity and support. But why is it so important? Why should we make it a priority to surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a room full of negative people? How did you feel afterward? Brained, right? On the other hand, have you ever been in a room full of positive and supportive people? How did you feel then? Energized, inspired, and motivated. That, my friends, is the power of the people we surround ourselves with. You see, we are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. They shape our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. And if we want to stay focused on our dreams, we need to surround ourselves with people who will uplift us, encourage us, and push us towards our goals. We need to create a circle of influence that will support and guide us towards success. But how do we do that? How do we surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, let me share with you a few key principles that have helped me in my own journey. First and foremost, we must be intentional about who we let into our inner circle. We must be selective about the people we allow to influence us. Now, this doesn't mean that we should only surround ourselves with people who agree with us or have the same goals as us. It means that we should surround ourselves with people who have a positive outlook on life, who are driven and motivated, and who will challenge us to be our best selves. Secondly, we must be willing to let go of toxic relationships. This can be a difficult and uncomfortable process, but it is necessary for our growth and success. We cannot afford to have negative and unsupportive people dragging us down and holding us back. It may be tough, but we must have the courage to distance ourselves from those who do not align with our goals and dreams. Next, we must actively seek out positive and supportive people. This means attending networking events, joining clubs or organizations, or even reaching out to mentors or coaches. Surrounding ourselves with like-minded individuals who are also on a path toward success will not only provide us with support, but also open doors to new opportunities and connections. But it's not just about finding positive and supportive people. It's also about being one. We must be the kind of person that we want to surround ourselves with. This means being positive, uplifting, and supportive to others. When we radiate positivity, we attract it back into our lives. And lastly, we must remember that it's not just about the people we physically surround ourselves with, but also the information we consume. In today's digital age, we are constantly bombarded with information from various sources. And it's important to be mindful of what we allow into our minds. We must be selective about the books we read, the podcasts we listen to, and the social media accounts we follow. Surrounding ourselves with positive and motivational content will help us stay focused on our dreams and drown out the negativity. My friends, surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people is crucial to our success. It is a key component in staying focused on our dreams and achieving our goals. So, I urge you all to take a look at the people in your life and ask yourself, are they helping or hindering your journey towards success? And if necessary, Make the necessary changes to surround yourself with a circle of influence that will uplift and support you. Now, on to number two. You must have a clear vision of where you want to go and who you want to be. That is why the second way to stay focused on your dreams is to create a vision board. Now some of you may be wondering, what exactly is a vision board? Well, let me tell you. A vision board is a powerful tool that helps you visualize your dreams and goals. It is a collage of images, quotes, and affirmations that represent your desires and aspirations. It serves as a constant reminder of what you want to achieve and keeps you focused on your dreams. You see, our minds are like magnets. They attract what we constantly think about. And a vision board helps us to constantly think about our dreams and goals. It is like a roadmap that guides us toward our destination. Just like a GPS, it helps us stay on track and avoid getting lost in the distractions of life. Creating a vision board is a simple process, but the impact it can have on your life is immeasurable. First, you need to identify your dreams and goals. What is it that you truly want in life? What are your deepest desires? Take some time to reflect on these questions and write down your answers. Next, find images, quotes, and affirmations that represent your dreams and goals. You can cut them out from magazines, print them from the internet, or even draw them yourself. The important thing is that these images and words resonate with you and evoke strong emotion. Once you have gathered all your materials, it's time to put them together on a board. 
You can use a cork board, poster board, or even a virtual board on your computer. Arrange the images and words in a way that is visually appealing to you. You can also add some personal touches like your favorite colors or decorations. Now you may be thinking, how exactly does looking at a board help me stay focused on my dreams? Well, let me tell you. The power of visualization is incredible. When we see something repeatedly, our minds start to believe it is possible. It creates a sense of familiarity and comfort, making our dreams and goals seem more attainable. When you look at your vision board every day, it serves as a reminder of what you are working toward. It keeps your dreams and goals at the forefront of your mind. And when you are faced with challenges or distractions, your vision board serves as a source of motivation and inspiration. But creating a vision board is not just about putting pretty pictures together. It is about taking action toward your dreams. Your vision board should be a reflection of your actions and the steps you are taking to achieve your goals. It should also evolve as you grow and your dreams change. For example, if one of your dreams is to travel the world, your vision board can include images of different countries, quotes about adventure, and affirmations about exploring new cultures. But it should also include a savings plan or a list of steps you need to take to make your dream a reality. Creating a vision board is not a one-time activity. It is an ongoing process that requires you to constantly review and update it. As you achieve your goals, you can remove them from your board and add new ones. This not only keeps your vision board relevant, but also helps you track your progress. Now some of you may be skeptical about the power of a vision board. You may be thinking, how can looking at pictures and words help me achieve my dreams? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever bought a new car and suddenly started seeing that same car everywhere? Or have you ever thought about someone and then ran into them unexpectedly? This is the power of our minds and the law of attraction. When we focus our thoughts and energy on something, we start to notice it more in our surroundings. And by constantly looking at our vision board, we are focusing our thoughts and energy on our dreams and goals. We are attracting them into our lives. But let me be clear. A vision board is not a magic wand. It is not going to make your dreams come true overnight. It is simply a tool to help you stay focused and motivated on your journey toward success. It requires hard work, dedication, and perseverance to achieve your dreams. But with a clear vision and a strong mindset, anything is possible. Now ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to share with you the number one way to stay focused on your dreams. As a personal development guru, I have spent my life studying and teaching the principles of success. And I can confidently say that the key to achieving your dreams lies in setting clear and specific goals. You see, we all have dreams and aspirations. We all have that burning desire to achieve something great, to make a difference in the world, to leave a legacy. But how many of us actually turn those dreams into reality? How many of us get distracted, lose motivation, or give up altogether? The sad truth is, the majority of people never reach their full potential because they lack one crucial element, clear and specific goals. Goals are like a compass that guides us toward our destination. They give us direction, purpose, and a sense of control over our lives. Without them, we are like ships without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. So my friends, if you want to stay focused on your dreams and turn them into reality, you must set clear and specific goals. But what exactly do I mean by clear and specific goals? Well, let me break it down for you. First and foremost, your goals must be clear. This means that you must have a crystal clear picture of what you want to achieve. You cannot just say, I want to be successful, or, I want to be rich. Those are vague and ambiguous statements that will not get you anywhere. You must be specific about what success or wealth means to you. Is it a certain amount of money? Is it a specific position in your career? Is it a certain level of happiness and fulfillment? The more specific you are, the clearer your goals will be. Next, your goals must be specific. This means that they must be measurable and have a deadline. You cannot just say, I want to lose weight, or, I want to start a business. Those are vague statements that do not give you a target to aim for. Instead, you must set a specific amount of weight you want to lose and a deadline to achieve it. Or you must set a specific type of business you want to start, and a timeline for its launch. This will not only give you a clear target to aim for, but it will also create a sense of urgency and accountability. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, setting goals is easy. I can just write them down and forget about them. Well, my friends, let me tell you this. Setting goals is the easiest part. 
It's the discipline and commitment to follow through on those goals that separates the winners from the losers. You see, setting goals is just the first step. The real work begins when you start taking action toward those goals. And this brings me to my next point. The power of small, consistent actions. You see, most people fail to achieve their goals because they get overwhelmed by the enormity of the task at hand. They set big, audacious goals, but they have no idea how to achieve them. And when they don't see immediate results, they get discouraged and give up. But here's the thing. Consistent actions, every day, toward your goals, will lead to success. It's not about making huge leaps and bounds. It's about taking small, consistent steps in the right direction. So my friends, if you want to stay focused on your dreams, you must commit to taking small, consistent actions every day toward your goals. And trust me, when you look back after a year or two, you will be amazed at how far you have come. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have set goals in the past, and I have failed to achieve them. What makes you think this time will be any different? Well, let me tell you this. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. Every successful person has failed at some point in their lives. But what sets them apart is their ability to learn from their failures and keep moving forward. You see, failure is not fatal. It is just feedback. It shows you what works and what doesn't. Tell my friends, do not be afraid of failure. Embrace it. Learn from it and use it as a stepping stone toward your goals. As we come to the end of this message, I want to leave you with one last thought. Setting clear and specific goals is not a one-time event. It is an ongoing process. As you achieve one goal, you must set another one, and then another one. That's how you keep growing, keep evolving, and keep moving toward your dreams. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Are you someone who struggles with stepping out of your comfort zone? Do you find yourself stuck in the same routine day after day, wondering why you're not seeing the success you desire? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, I want to share five ways to step out of your comfort zone and into success. Trust me, I've been there. I know what it's like to feel comfortable and safe in your routine, but also feel unfulfilled and stagnant. But let me tell you, it doesn't have to be that way. By listening to this message, you will learn practical and actionable steps to break out of your comfort zone and start seeing the success you deserve. So, grab a pen and paper, get comfortable, and let's dive into the five ways to step out of comfort and into success. Starting with number five, step out of comfort and into success by surrounding yourself with successful people. You may wonder, why is this so important? Well, success is not a solo journey, it is a team effort. The people you surround yourself with can either lift you up or bring you down. So, it is crucial that you choose your inner circle wisely. Success is not just about achieving wealth and fame. It's about living a fulfilling and meaningful life. The people you surround yourself with can greatly influence your thoughts, actions, and ultimately, your results. If you surround yourself with negative and unmotivated individuals, chances are you will adopt their mindset and behaviors. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with successful and driven individuals, you will be inspired and motivated to reach for your own success. Now, I understand some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't know any successful people. How can I surround myself with them? Well, success is not just limited to the rich and famous. Success comes in many forms and can be found in people from all walks of life. It could be your mentor, your boss, your colleague, or even your neighbor. The key is to seek out those who have achieved what you aspire to and learn from them. Remember, successful people are always willing to help others who are on the same path. The first step is to identify your goals and aspirations. What do you want to achieve in life? Once you have a clear vision, seek out individuals who have already achieved what you want. Attend networking events, join mastermind groups, and reach out to people who inspire you. The second step is to be a giver, not just a taker. Successful people are generous and always willing to share their knowledge and experiences. So, when you meet someone who you admire, don't just ask for their help or advice. Offer something in return. It could be your time, skills, or even a simple thank you note. By being a giver, you will build genuine and meaningful relationships with successful individuals. The third step is to be open-minded and willing to learn. Successful people are constantly learning and growing. They are not afraid to admit their mistakes and seek guidance from others. So be open to new ideas and perspectives. 
ask questions and listen attentively. And most importantly, be humble and willing to learn from those who have already achieved what you desire. The fourth step is to be persistent and consistent. Surrounding yourself with successful people is not a one-time event. It is an ongoing process. You must be persistent in seeking out new connections and consistent in nurturing existing relationships. Remember, success is not a destination. It is a journey. And by surrounding yourself with successful people, you will have a support system to guide and motivate you along the way. And finally, the fifth and most important step is to be grateful. Gratitude is the key to success. Be grateful for the people in your life who have helped you and supported you. And most importantly, be grateful for the successful people you have surrounded yourself with. Let them know how much you appreciate them and their impact on your life. Gratitude will not only strengthen your relationships, but also attract more success into your life. Which leads us to number four. Step out of comfort and into success by learning from failure. I know what you might be thinking. Failure? That's not something I want to think about, let alone learn from. But let me tell you, failure is not something to be feared. In fact, it is a necessary part of the journey toward success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has experienced failure at some point in their lives. From Thomas Edison to Steve Jobs, failure was a constant companion on their road to success. But what sets them apart from those who never achieved their dreams is that they didn't let failure stop them. They learned from it, they grew from it, and they used it as a stepping stone towards their goals. So my friends, I want to challenge you to embrace failure. Embrace it as a teacher as a guide, and as a necessary part of your journey toward success. When we stay in our comfort zones, we limit ourselves. We limit our potential, our growth, and our opportunities. But when we step out of our comfort zones and into the unknown, that's where the magic happens. Now I'm not saying it's easy. Stepping out of our comfort zones can be scary. It means facing our fears, taking risks, and being vulnerable. But let me tell you, the reward is worth it. The reward of growth, of new experiences, and of achieving our dreams is worth any discomfort we may feel. But how do we learn from failure? How do we turn it into a stepping stone toward success? Well, the first step is to change our mindset. Instead of seeing failure as a negative experience, we need to see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. As the saying goes, there is no failure, only feedback. So when we experience failure, we need to ask ourselves, what can I learn from this? How can I do better next time? The second step is to take responsibility for our failures. It's easy to blame others or external circumstances for our failures. But the truth is, we are in control of our own lives. We need to take ownership of our failures and use them as a catalyst for change. The third step is to analyze our failures. We need to take a step back and objectively look at what went wrong. What were the factors that led to our failure? What could we have done differently? By analyzing our failures, we can identify patterns and make necessary adjustments for future endeavors. The fourth step is to use our failures as motivation. Instead of letting failure bring us down, we need to use it as fuel to drive us toward success. Let it be a reminder of why we started in the first place, and let it push us to keep going, to keep trying, and to never give up. And finally, the fifth step is to keep moving forward. Failure is not the end. It's just a temporary setback. We need to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep moving towards our goals. Remember, success is not a straight line. It's a journey with ups and downs. It's the failures that make the success even sweeter. Which leads us to number three. Step out of comfort and into success by taking risks. Risks are scary and unpredictable. But let me tell you this. Success does not come to those who play it safe. It comes to those who are willing to take risks and embrace the unknown. Think about it. Every successful person you know has taken a risk at some point in their life. They have stepped out of their comfort zone and pursued their dreams even when the odds were against them. And that is the key to success. Having the courage to take risks and the determination to see it through. Now I'm not saying that you should take reckless risks without any thought or planning. No. What I am saying is that you should take calculated risks. Risks that have the potential to bring you closer to your goals and dreams. Risks that will challenge you and push you out of your comfort zone. The truth is, staying in our comfort zone may feel safe and secure, but it also means staying stagnant. It means not growing, not learning, 
and not reaching our full potential. And that, my friends, is a risk in itself. The risk of living a mediocre life full of regrets and what-ifs. But when we take risks, we open ourselves up to new opportunities and experiences. We learn from our failures and mistakes, and we become stronger and wiser. And most importantly, we grow. We grow into the person we are meant to be, and we move closer to our dreams and goals. Now I understand that taking risks can be scary. It requires us to step into the unknown, to face our fears and doubts. But let me tell you this. Fear is just a temporary emotion. Regret, on the other hand, is a feeling that can last a lifetime. So my friends, I urge you to take that leap of faith. Take that risk that you have been contemplating for so long. Whether it is starting your own business, pursuing a new career, or simply trying something new, take that first step, and I promise you, the rewards will be worth it. Remember, success is not a destination, it is a journey. And to embark on that journey, we must be willing to take risks. So let go of your fears and doubts, and trust in yourself and your abilities. Believe in your dreams, and have the courage to pursue them. Which leads us to number two. Step out of comfort and into success by setting goals. Setting goals is not a new concept, but it is a concept that is often overlooked or not given the attention it deserves. You see, goals are the roadmap to success. They are the guiding light that leads us towards our dreams and aspirations. Without goals, we are simply drifting through life, going wherever the wind takes us. But with goals, we have a clear direction and purpose. So, how do we set goals effectively? The first step in setting goals is to have a clear vision. You need to know what you want to achieve in life. Once you have a clear vision, the next step is to turn that vision into a goal. And here is where most people make a mistake. They set vague and general goals. For example, I want to be successful, or I want to be rich. These are not goals. These are wishes. Goals need to be specific and measurable. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to start my own business and make $100,000 in the first year. This is a specific and measurable goal. The next step is to break down your goals into smaller, achievable tasks. This will make them more manageable and less overwhelming. It will also give you a sense of progress and motivation as you complete each task. Now let me share with you a powerful technique that I have used throughout my life to achieve my goals. It is called the SMART technique. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Let me break it down for you. Specific, as I mentioned earlier, your goals need to be specific. The more specific they are, the easier it will be for you to create a plan of action. Measurable, your goals need to be measurable. This means that you need to have a way to track your progress and know when you have achieved your goal. Achievable, your goals need to be achievable. This means that they need to be realistic and within your reach. Setting unrealistic goals will only lead to disappointment and demotivation. Relevant, your goals need to be relevant to your overall vision and purpose in life. Don't set goals just for the sake of setting goals. They need to align with your values and aspirations. And finally, time-bound. Your goals need to have a deadline. This will create a sense of urgency and keep you on track. The most important aspect of setting goals is taking action. You can have the most well-defined goals, but if you don't take action, they will remain just that. Goals. Success is not a spectator sport. It requires action. So, once you have your goals in place, it is time to take action. Remember, it's not about taking big leaps. It's about taking small, consistent steps towards your goals. And finally, don't be afraid to adjust your goals along the way. Life is unpredictable, and things may not always go as planned. But that doesn't mean you give up on your goals. Be flexible and make adjustments as needed, but never give up on your dreams. Which leads us to number one. Step out of comfort and into success by embracing change. We all have a comfort zone. A place where we feel safe, secure, and in control. But here's the thing. Success does not happen in the comfort zone. Success happens when we step out of it and embrace change. Think about it. All the great achievements and breakthroughs in history happen because someone dared to step out of their comfort zone and embrace change. The Wright brothers didn't stay in their comfort zone and dream of flying. They took action and made it happen. Steve Jobs didn't stick to the traditional ways of doing things. He embraced change and revolutionized the tech industry. And I wouldn't be standing here today if I hadn't stepped out of my comfort zone and embraced change. So, 
What does it mean to embrace change? It means being open to new ideas and perspectives. It means being willing to learn and adapt. It means taking risks and being comfortable with being uncomfortable. It means being resilient and not giving up when faced with challenges. It means being proactive and not reactive. It means being the driver of your life, not just a passenger. Now I understand that change can be scary. It can make us feel vulnerable and uncertain. But let me tell you this. The only way to grow and achieve success is by stepping out of our comfort zone. Our comfort zone is like a bubble, and the longer we stay in it, the smaller it gets. But when we step out of it, we expand our bubble, and with it, our potential for growth and success. I want you to think of a time in your life when you embraced change. Maybe it was starting a new job, moving to a new city, or even trying a new hobby. How did it make you feel? I bet it was scary at first, but once you took that leap of faith, you realized that it was the best decision you could have made. And that's the beauty of change. It opens doors of opportunities that we never even knew existed. Now, let me share with you three practical ways to embrace change and step out of your comfort zone. First, cultivate a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that we can learn, develop, and improve through our efforts and experiences. It's the opposite of a fixed mindset, which believes that our abilities and talents are predetermined and cannot be changed. When we have a growth mindset, we see change as an opportunity to learn and grow, rather than a threat. Second, surround yourself with people who challenge and inspire you. As the saying goes, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. If you want to step out of your comfort zone and achieve success, you need to surround yourself with people who are also on that journey. People who will push you to be your best self and support you through the ups and downs of change. And finally, take action. The most significant barrier to embracing change is our own inertia. We get comfortable with the way things are, and we resist any form of change. But here's the truth. Nothing changes, if nothing changes. So take that first step, even if it's a small one, and then take another step, and another. Before you know it, you'll be well on your way to success. Remember, success is not a destination, it's a journey. And that journey requires us to step out of our comfort zone and embrace change. Change is not something to be feared, it's something to be embraced. So go out there and embrace change, and I promise you, success will follow. Thank you. Today I have an important message for all of you who have set goals but struggle to stick to them. I know it can be frustrating and discouraging when we set out to achieve something and end up falling short. But let me tell you, you are not alone. In fact, it's a common struggle that many people face. The good news is, there are ways to overcome this challenge and stay on track towards your goals. That's why in today's message, I want to share with you five powerful ways to stick to your goals. These are principles that I have personally used and have seen tremendous results in my own life. And I believe that by listening to this message, you too can turn things around and start making progress towards your goals. So if you're ready to learn how to stay committed and focused on your goals, then keep reading because I am confident that these five ways will help you overcome any obstacles and achieve the success you desire. Let's get started, starting with number five. As we continue on our journey of personal development, it is important to remember that the path to success is not always easy. It requires hard work, dedication, and most importantly, a positive and persistent mindset. So what exactly does it mean to stay positive and persistent? It means having an unwavering belief in yourself and your abilities, even when faced with challenges and setbacks. It means choosing to see the glass as half full instead of half empty. It means never giving up, no matter how many times you may stumble or fall. My friends, I can tell you from personal experience that staying positive and persistent is not always easy. In fact, it can be one of the most difficult things to do when faced with adversity. But I can also tell you that it is absolutely crucial for achieving your goals and living a fulfilling life. Let me share with you a story about a young man named John. John had a dream of becoming a successful entrepreneur and creating a better life for himself and his family. He had a clear vision of what he wanted to achieve and had set specific goals to get there. However, as John began his journey, he faced numerous challenges and obstacles. He was met with rejection, failure, and even criticism from those around him. It would have been easy for John to give up and let go of his dreams. But instead, he chose to stay positive and persistent. 
Every time he faced a setback, he reminded himself of his ultimate goal and why he was doing what he was doing. He surrounded himself with positive and supportive people who believed in him and his vision. And most importantly, he never gave up. He persisted through the tough times, and eventually, his hard work paid off. Today, Don is a successful entrepreneur living the life he had always dreamed of. My friends, this is the power of staying positive and persistent. It is what separates those who achieve their goals from those who give up. So how can we cultivate this mindset and make it a part of our daily lives? The first step is to focus on the positive. It is easy to get caught up in negativity and dwell on our failures and shortcomings, but I urge you to shift your focus to the good things in your life. Take a moment each day to reflect on what you are grateful for and celebrate your small wins. This will help to keep your spirits high and your mindset positive. The second step is to surround yourself with positive and supportive people. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with people who believe in you and your goals and who will lift you up when you are feeling down. And remember, it is okay to distance yourself from those who bring negativity into your life. The third step is to practice self-care. Taking care of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being is crucial for staying positive and persistent. Make time for activities that bring you joy and help you relax. Exercise regularly and fuel your body with nutritious food. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. We all make mistakes, but it is important to forgive ourselves and keep moving forward. The fourth step is to reframe your thoughts. Instead of seeing challenges as roadblocks, see them as opportunities for growth and learning. When faced with a setback, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And how can I use this experience to become better? By reframing your thoughts, you can turn any negative situation into a positive one. And finally, the fifth step is to never give up. As I mentioned earlier, success is not a straight path. It is filled with ups and downs, twists and turns. But if you stay positive and persistent, you will eventually reach your destination. Remember, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. So keep pushing forward, even when it feels like the odds are against you. My friends, staying positive and persistent is not a one-time thing. It is a daily practice that requires constant effort and determination. But I can assure you, the rewards are worth it. Not only will you achieve your goals, but you will also become a stronger, more resilient person in the process. Now to number four, which is celebrating small victories. Many of us have big dreams and goals that we want to achieve. But often, we get overwhelmed by the enormity of these goals. We start to doubt ourselves and question whether we are capable of achieving them. This is where celebrating small victories becomes crucial. It allows us to break down our goals into smaller, more manageable chunks and celebrate each step of the way. Think about it. When a baby learns to walk, we don't expect them to go from crawling to running in one day. We celebrate each small victory, each step they take towards their ultimate goal of walking. And the same principle applies to our own goals. We must learn to celebrate each small victory, each step we take towards our ultimate goal. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, why should I celebrate small victories? They are just small steps towards my big goal. And my response to that is, why not? Celebrating small victories not only gives us a sense of accomplishment and motivation, but it also allows us to reflect on our progress and see how far we have come. We live in a society where we are constantly bombarded with messages of instant gratification. We want things fast and easy, and when we don't see immediate results, we get discouraged and give up. But the truth is, success is not a straight path and it takes time, effort, and dedication to achieve our goals. Celebrating small victories helps us stay on track and reminds us that progress, no matter how small, is still progress. So how can we celebrate small victories? The first step is to define what a small victory means to you. It could be completing a task, reaching a milestone, or overcoming a challenge. Whatever it may be, make sure it is something that brings you closer to your goal. Next. Take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate your achievement. This could be as simple as giving yourself a pat on the back, saying a few words of encouragement to yourself, or treating yourself to something you enjoy. The key is to take a moment to celebrate and recognize your progress. Another way to celebrate small victories is to share them with others. This could be with friends, family, or even on social media. 
By sharing your achievements, you not only spread positivity and inspiration to others, but you also hold yourself accountable and motivate yourself to keep going. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I don't achieve my goal? What if I fail? My response to that is, so what? Failure is a part of the journey towards success. It is through failure that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. And even if we don't achieve our ultimate goal, celebrating small victories allows us to appreciate the progress we have made and the lessons we have learned along the way. I want to share a personal story with you all. When I first started my journey towards success, I had a big dream of becoming a successful entrepreneur. But I faced many challenges and setbacks along the way. There were times when I wanted to give up, but I reminded myself to celebrate small victories every time I closed a deal, received positive feedback from a client, and learned something new. I celebrated, and before I knew it, those small victories added up, and I had achieved my ultimate goal of becoming a successful entrepreneur. Now, on to number three, which is staying accountable. Accountability is the glue that holds our goals and dreams together. It is the fuel that keeps us going when the going gets tough. Without accountability, our goals are just mere wishes floating in the wind with no direction or purpose. But with accountability, our goals become a reality, and our dreams become our destiny. So, what exactly does it mean to stay accountable? Simply put, it means taking responsibility for our actions and being answerable to ourselves and others for the outcomes. It means setting clear and measurable goals, creating a plan of action, and consistently tracking our progress towards those goals. It means being honest with ourselves and acknowledging when we fall short and taking the necessary steps to get back on track. Now let me ask you this. How many times have you set a goal for yourself only to give up on it a few weeks or months later? How many times have you told yourself that you will start that diet or exercise routine on Monday, only to find yourself making excuses and pushing it off for another day? How many times have you promised yourself that you will save more money or spend more time with your loved ones, only to let life get in the way? We have all been there. We have all experienced the frustration and disappointment of not following through on our goals. But the good news is, it doesn't have to be this way. By staying accountable, we can break this cycle of self-sabotage and finally achieve the success we desire. So, how do we stay accountable? The first step is to set clear and specific goals. Many of us have a general idea of what we want to achieve, but we fail to define it in concrete terms. For example, instead of saying, I want to lose weight, set a specific goal such as, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next 3 months. This gives us a clear target to aim for, and makes it easier to track our progress. The next step is to create a plan of action. A goal without a plan is just a wish. We must break down our goals into smaller actionable steps, and create a roadmap to achieve them. This not only helps us stay focused, but also gives us a sense of direction and purpose. But having a plan is not enough. We must also consistently track our progress towards our goals. This means setting aside time each week to review our actions and see if we are on track. If we are falling behind, we must take the necessary steps to get back on track. And if we are making progress, we must celebrate our wins and use that momentum to keep moving forward. Now here's where accountability comes into play. It's easy to make excuses and let ourselves off the hook when we are the only ones holding ourselves accountable. But when we involve others in our journey, it becomes much harder to give up. This is where an accountability partner or a support group can be incredibly beneficial. By sharing our goals with someone else, we are not only making a commitment to ourselves, but also making a commitment to them. And when we have someone else holding us accountable, we are more likely to follow through on our actions and stay on track. Another powerful way to stay accountable is to publicly declare our goals. This could mean sharing our goals on social media, or with our friends and family. By making our goals public, we are not only holding ourselves accountable, but also inviting others to support us and hold us accountable as well. But perhaps the most crucial aspect of staying accountable is being honest with ourselves. We must be willing to acknowledge when we fall short and take responsibility for our actions. It's easy to make excuses and blame external factors for our lack of progress. But the truth is, the only thing standing in the way of our success is ourselves. By taking ownership of our actions and holding ourselves accountable, we can break free from self-sabotage and finally achieve our goals. Moving on to number two, which is to create a plan. You see, having a goal is great. 
It gives us something to strive for, something to work towards. But without a plan, a goal is just a wish. It's like trying to build a house without a blueprint. You may have all the materials and tools, but without a plan, you'll end up with a mess instead of a beautiful home. The same goes for our goals. We need a plan to guide us, to keep us on track, and to help us overcome any obstacles that may come our way. So, how do we create a plan that will lead us to success? Let me share with you some key points. First and foremost, we need to be specific about our goals. Many of us have a general idea of what we want to achieve, but we need to be more specific. For example, if your goal is to lose weight, how much weight do you want to lose? By when do you want to achieve this goal? Being specific not only gives us a clear target but also helps us measure our progress. Next, we need to break our goals down into smaller, more manageable tasks. This is where many people get overwhelmed and give up on their goals. They see the end result and think it's too big, too daunting, but if we break it down into smaller tasks, it becomes less intimidating. And when we accomplish each task, it gives us a sense of achievement and motivates us to keep going. Now let's talk about the timeline. As the saying goes, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. We need to set a timeline for each task and for the overall goal. This not only helps us stay on track, but also creates a sense of urgency. When we have a deadline, we are more likely to take action and make progress towards our goal. Another important aspect of creating a plan is to anticipate any potential obstacles. We all know that life can throw us curveballs. But if we have already thought about potential challenges and have a plan to overcome them, we are less likely to get derailed from our goals. Remember, it's not about avoiding obstacles. It's about being prepared to face them and keep moving forward. Now, let's talk about accountability. It's easy to make excuses and let ourselves off the hook when we don't have someone holding us accountable. That's why it's important to share our goals and our plan with someone we trust. This could be a friend, a family member, or a coach. When we have someone to answer to, we are more likely to stay committed to our plan and achieve our goals. But creating a plan is not just about the end result. It's also about the journey. We need to enjoy the process, celebrate our successes, and learn from our failures. It's important to have a positive mindset and not get discouraged when things don't go as planned. Remember, every setback is an opportunity to learn and grow. Now I know some of you may be thinking, I don't have the time to create a plan. But let me tell you, if you don't have the time to plan, you don't have the time to succeed. Planning is an investment in our future. It may take some time and effort now, but it will save us time and frustration in the long run. And now, I want to share with you the number one way to stick to your goals and make them a reality. And that is by setting specific and achievable goals. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a goal that was so vague in general that you had no idea where to even begin? Maybe it was something like, I want to be successful, or I want to be healthier. While these are admirable goals, they lack specificity, and therefore it becomes difficult to create a plan of action to achieve them. On the other hand, Setting specific goals means defining exactly what you want to achieve and how you will achieve it. It means setting a clear and measurable target that you can work towards. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, you could say, I want to increase my income by 20% in the next six months. This goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. But setting specific and achievable goals is just the first step. The next step is to make sure that these goals are achievable. Now I am not saying that you should limit yourself or set small goals. In fact, I believe in dreaming big and setting audacious goals. But at the same time, we must be realistic and consider our current circumstances and resources. For instance, if your goal is to become a millionaire in a year, but you are currently struggling to make ends meet, then that goal may not be achievable in such a short time frame. However, if you break it down into smaller achievable goals, such as increasing your income by 10% each month, it becomes more realistic and attainable. Setting achievable goals not only helps us stay motivated, but also allows us to experience small wins along the way. These wins serve as fuel for our motivation and keep us on track towards our ultimate goal. Now I want to share with you a powerful technique that will help you set specific and achievable goals. It is called the SMART Goal Setting Method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Let's break it down. Specific means defining exactly what you want to achieve. Measurable means setting a target that can be quantified or measured. 
Achievable means setting a goal that is within your reach. Relevant means setting a goal that aligns with your values and priorities. And lastly, time-bound means setting a deadline to achieve your goal by. By using the SMART method, you can turn your vague and general goals into specific and achievable ones. Let's take the example of wanting to be healthier. Using the SMART method, we can turn it into, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next three months by exercising three times a week and following a balanced diet. This goal is specific. Measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. But setting specific and achievable goals is just the first step. The real challenge lies in sticking to these goals and seeing them through to the end. And this is where many of us struggle. We get excited about setting goals, but when it comes to taking action, we often fall short. So, how can we stay committed and motivated to our goals? The answer is simple. By creating a plan of action. You see, setting goals is not enough. We must also have a plan in place to achieve them. And this plan should include specific actions that we will take to move towards our goal. For example, if your goal is to increase your income by 20% in the next six months, your plan of action may include actions such as networking, taking on additional projects, or learning new skills. By having a plan in place, you are setting yourself up for success and increasing your chances of achieving your goals. But even with a plan, there will be times when we face challenges and setbacks. And this is where the power of perseverance comes in. We must be willing to push through the tough times and stay committed to our goals. Remember, success is not a straight line. It is filled with ups and downs. But it is our determination and perseverance that will ultimately lead us to our desired destination. So, my friends, I urge you to set specific and achievable goals, create a plan of action, and persevere through the challenges. And I promise you, you will see your goals become a reality. Thank you. Are you someone who struggles with self-sabotage? Do you often find yourself getting in your own way, hindering your own success? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, we'll be discussing the common ways in which we sabotage our own success and, more importantly, how to put an end to it. Self-sabotage is a common issue that affects many individuals, and it can be a major obstacle in achieving our goals and dreams. But the good news is, it's not a permanent state. By listening to this message, you'll learn how to turn things around and start paving the way towards your own success. So, if you're ready to take control of your actions and break free from self-sabotage, then stay tuned, because in just a few moments, I'll be sharing with you five powerful ways to stop sabotaging your own success. Let's dive in and start creating the life you truly deserve, starting with number five which is to stop sabotaging your own success by practicing self-care and self-compassion. Now you may be wondering, how can self-care and self-compassion help us achieve success? Well, let me tell you, my friends, they are the foundation on which all other success is built. Success is not just about external achievements. It's also about our internal well-being, and self-care and self-compassion are the tools that help us maintain that well-being. So, what exactly is self-care? Self-care is the practice of taking care of our physical, emotional, and mental needs. It's about making time for ourselves, prioritizing our health and happiness, and setting boundaries to protect our well-being. It's not selfish, as some may believe, but it's necessary for our personal growth and success. We live in a fast-paced world where we're constantly bombarded with responsibilities, deadlines, and expectations. We're always on the go, trying to keep up with the demands of our jobs, families, and social lives. And in the midst of all this chaos, we often forget to take care of ourselves. We neglect our physical health by not getting enough rest or exercise. We ignore our emotional needs by not addressing our feelings and emotions. And we overlook our mental well-being by not giving ourselves a break from the constant stream of thoughts and worries. But my friends, I'm here to tell you that self-care is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It's the key to unlocking our full potential and achieving success in all aspects of our lives. When we take care of ourselves, we're better equipped to handle the challenges and obstacles that come our way. We have more energy, focus, and resilience to overcome any setbacks and keep moving forward. Now let's talk about self-compassion. Self-compassion is the practice of treating ourselves with kindness, understanding, and forgiveness. It's about being our own best friend and ally, rather than our own worst critic. It means acknowledging our imperfections and mistakes, but not beating ourselves up over them. 
It means giving ourselves the same love and compassion that we would give to a dear friend or family member. Many of us have a harsh inner critic that constantly tells us we're not good enough, smart enough, or capable enough. This negative self-talk can be detrimental to our self-esteem and confidence. It can hold us back from reaching our full potential. But with self-compassion, we can silence that inner critic and replace it with a kind, supportive voice. We can learn to be gentle with ourselves and accept that we are human and we will make mistakes. But those mistakes do not define us and they do not diminish our worth. So my friends, how do we practice self-care and self-compassion in our daily lives? It starts with small, intentional actions. It means taking breaks when we need them, saying no to things that drain us, and making time for activities that bring us joy and relaxation. It means setting boundaries with others and ourselves and not feeling guilty about it. It also means being mindful of our thoughts and replacing negative self-talk with positive affirmations. Self-care and self-compassion also involve taking care of our physical health. This means getting enough sleep, eating nutritious foods, and exercising regularly. When we prioritize our physical well-being, we have more energy and vitality to tackle our goals and dreams. But most importantly, self-care and self-compassion mean being kind to ourselves, especially in times of failure or setbacks. Instead of berating ourselves for our mistakes, we can practice self-compassion by acknowledging our efforts and giving ourselves a pep talk. We can remind ourselves that failure is a natural part of the journey to success, and it does not define who we are. Which leads us to number four, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by taking responsibility for your actions. Now, you may be wondering, what does taking responsibility have to do with success? Well, my friends, let me tell you, it has everything to do with it. Success is not just about achieving your goals or reaching a certain level of wealth or status. It is about becoming the best version of yourself and living a life of purpose and fulfillment. And the only way to truly achieve that is by taking responsibility for your actions. So, what does it mean to take responsibility for your actions? It means owning up to your mistakes, acknowledging your shortcomings, and being accountable for the choices you make. It means not blaming others for your failures or expecting someone else to fix your problems. It means being in control of your life and understanding that you have the power to create your own success. Now I know that taking responsibility is not always easy. It requires courage and humility. It means facing your fears and admitting when you are wrong. But let me tell you my friends, the rewards are worth it. When you take responsibility for your actions, you gain a sense of control over your life. You become the driver of your own destiny, rather than a passenger. And that, my friends, is true freedom. You see, many people go through life playing the blame game. They blame their circumstances, their upbringing, their boss, their spouse, anyone and anything but themselves. But here's the truth. Blaming others will never lead to success. It will only hold you back and keep you from reaching your full potential. So, I urge you to stop playing the blame game and start taking responsibility for your actions. Now, I understand that some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if my circumstances are truly out of my control? My response to that is, you may not be able to control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. You can choose to let your circumstances defeat you, or you can choose to rise above them and use them as fuel to propel you toward success. The choice is yours. Taking responsibility also means being proactive. It means not waiting for someone else to solve your problems, or waiting for the perfect opportunity to come. Knocking on your door. It means taking action and making things happen for yourself. As the saying goes, if you want something done, do it yourself. So, stop waiting for the perfect moment and start creating it. Another important aspect of taking responsibility is learning from your mistakes. We all make mistakes. It's a part of life. But what separates successful individuals from the rest is their ability to learn from their mistakes and use them as stepping stones toward success. So, don't be afraid to fail. Embrace your failures, learn from them, and use them to grow and become better. Furthermore, taking responsibility also means having a positive attitude. It means not dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. It means focusing on the present and making the best of every situation. A positive attitude is a powerful tool that can help you overcome any obstacle and achieve your goals. So choose to see the good in every situation and watch how it transforms your life. Which leads us to number three, which is to stop sabotaging your own success 
by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now I want you to take a moment and think about the people in your life. Are they positive and supportive? Do they encourage you to chase your dreams and reach for the stars? Or do they bring you down and make you doubt yourself? You see, my friends, the people you surround yourself with can either be your greatest asset or your biggest liability. They can either lift you up or bring you down. And it's up to you to choose who you want to surround yourself with. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, if you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with successful and positive people. Now I know it's not always easy to let go of negative and unsupportive people in our lives. They may be our family members, friends, or even colleagues. But sometimes we need to make tough decisions for our own well-being and success. As the great Jim Rohn once said, you cannot hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. So, it's time to evaluate the people in your life and make the necessary changes. Surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people is not just about having a cheerleading squad. It's about having a network of people who will challenge you, inspire you, and hold you accountable. These people will push you to be your best self and will not let you settle for mediocrity. But how do you find these positive and supportive people? Well, it starts with being a positive and supportive person yourself. You attract what you put out into the world. So, if you want to surround yourself with positive and supportive people, you need to be one yourself. Be kind, be encouraging, and be a source of positivity for others. This will not only attract like-minded people into your life, but will also make you a better person. Another way to find positive and supportive people is to join groups or communities that align with your a goals and values. These can be networking groups, mastermind groups, or even online communities. Surrounding yourself with people who have similar goals and values as you will not only provide you with a support system, but also give you the opportunity to learn and grow together. Lastly, don't be afraid to let go of toxic relationships. As hard as it may be, sometimes we need to distance ourselves from people who bring negativity into our lives. This doesn't mean you have to completely cut them off, but it's important to set boundaries and limit your interactions with them. Remember, your mental and emotional well-being is just as important as your physical health. Which leads us to number two, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by setting realistic goals. Now you may be wondering why this is the number two way. Shouldn't it be the number one way? Well, let me tell you this, my friends. Without setting realistic goals, you will never even get to the point of sabotaging your own success. Setting realistic goals is the foundation of any successful journey. It is the roadmap that will guide you towards your dreams and aspirations. But what exactly do I mean by setting realistic goals? First and foremost, it means being honest with yourself. It means understanding your strengths and weaknesses, your limitations, and your potential. It means setting goals that are achievable and within your reach. Now this doesn't mean that you should limit yourself or aim for mediocrity. No, my friends, it simply means that you should set goals that are challenging, yet attainable. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to start your own business. Your ultimate goal is to become a millionaire within the next five years. Now that's a great goal to have, but is it realistic? Can you realistically become a millionaire in just five years? Perhaps but it will require a lot of hard work, dedication, and a bit of luck. So instead, why not set a more achievable goal, such as making $100,000 in the first year of your business? This goal is still challenging, but it is also more realistic and attainable. And once you achieve this goal, you can set even bigger goals for the following years. Another important aspect of setting realistic goals is to make them specific and measurable. Instead of saying, I want to lose weight, Set a specific goal such as, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next 6 months. This way, you have a clear target to work towards, and you can track your progress along the way. And remember my friends, progress is the key to success. As long as you are moving forward, even if it's just a small step at a time, you are on the right track. Now, I want to address a common misconception about setting realistic goals. Many people believe that setting realistic goals means playing it safe and settling for less. But let me tell you this, my friends. Setting realistic goals does not mean settling for less. It simply means being smart and strategic about your goals. It means setting yourself up for success instead of failure. And let me ask you this. Would you rather achieve smaller goals and feel fulfilled, or set unrealistic goals and constantly feel disappointed and discouraged? 
Setting realistic goals also means being adaptable. Life is unpredictable, and things may not always go as planned. But that doesn't mean you should give up on your goals. Instead, be open to adjusting your goals when necessary. If you encounter a roadblock or a setback, don't be afraid to reassess and make changes. Remember, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And sometimes, the journey may take a different path than we originally planned. Now I want to share with you a powerful quote from my mentor, Earl Schof. He said, Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. This quote perfectly encapsulates the essence of setting realistic goals. It's not about taking the easy way out. It's about continuously improving and becoming better versions of ourselves. And when we do that, we can achieve anything we set our minds to. My friends, setting realistic goals is the key to unlocking your full potential. It is the bridge that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. So I urge you, don't sabotage your own success by setting unrealistic goals. Instead, be honest with yourself, set specific and measurable goals, and be adaptable. And most importantly, never stop striving to become better. Remember, the only limitations we have are the ones we set for ourselves. Which leads us to number one, which is to stop sabotaging your own success by identifying and challenging negative thought patterns. The first step towards achieving success is to become aware of our thoughts. We need to pay attention to the voices in our head and question their validity. Just because we think something doesn't mean it is true. For example, if you have a goal to start your own business but your mind is constantly telling you that you don't have what it takes, that you will fail, or that it's too risky, you need to challenge those thoughts. Ask yourself, where do these thoughts come from? Are they based on facts or just fear? Are they helping me or holding me back? Negative thought patterns often stem from our past experiences, our upbringing, or the opinions of others. But the good news is, we have the power to change them. We can choose to let go of those limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering thoughts. The next step is to replace negative thoughts with positive ones. Instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I am capable and I will find a way. Instead of saying, I am not smart enough, say, I am constantly learning and growing. These may seem like small changes, but they can make a huge difference in how we approach our goals and ultimately our results. It is also important to surround ourselves with positive influences. The people we spend time with and the content we consume can have a significant impact on our thoughts and beliefs. Choose to spend time with people who uplift and inspire you, and consume content that motivates and educates you. Remember, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. Another powerful way to challenge negative thought patterns is to practice gratitude. When we focus on what we are grateful for, we shift our mindset from lack to abundance. We start to see the good in our lives and appreciate what we have rather than constantly focusing on what we don't have. Gratitude also helps us to maintain a positive outlook and attracts more positivity into our lives. But let's be real, changing our thought patterns is not an easy task. It takes time and effort, and we will face setbacks along the way. That's why it is important to be patient and kind to ourselves. We need to understand that we are not defined by our thoughts, and we have the power to change them. It's like building a muscle. The more we practice, the stronger we become. In addition, we need to be mindful of the language we use, both in our thoughts and in our words. Our words have power, and they can either lift us up or bring us down. So instead of saying, I am a failure, say, I failed at this particular task, but I am not a failure. The small change in language can make a big difference in how we perceive ourselves and our abilities. Lastly, it is important to remember that success is not a destination, it is a journey. We will face challenges and failures, but those are just opportunities for growth and learning. It is how we respond to those challenges that will determine our success. So instead of letting negative thoughts hold us back, let's use them as fuel to propel us forward. Remember, our thoughts are not facts, and we have the power to change them. Let's choose to think positively, surround ourselves with positivity, practice gratitude, and be patient and kind to ourselves. And most importantly, Let's take action towards our goals and dreams, because that is the only way we can turn them into reality. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best on your journey towards success. As I always say, success is not to be pursued, it is to be attracted by the person you become. So let's become the best version of ourselves and attract the success we deserve.